I cannot hear you guys. So, yeah, I can see that. So I think personally, I think the uh, the next in major is reliability um, science. Uh, why I say so? Okay, why I say so? Uh, first of all, that I mean, I think you guys might not know that. Oh, okay. Um, Number one, do you know how many parts that car has? Actually, the cars has about 30,000 um, parts. And aircraft, they might have millions. So the Lufthansa actually is a German, um, German um, mm -hmm. um, air, airlines aircraft, company. Yeah. They claim that it, took, um, that it took six million parts to build the Boeing 7478, okay? So that means millions. And I want to look at the left-hand side, the question, what happened if only one part break? What would happen? So if you think of that aircraft have millions, and how, best, how about the spaceship, the space shuttle, how many parts they have? Yeah, so I think um, you would be, so this actually is a um, it called all ring, okay? And the, the price of this is about zero point one five dollar to ten dollar each one, yeah. Uh, if this break, what would happen? Yeah. So I want to see that um, there's a video. Okay, so what the video that you just saw is exactly that people have experienced in 1986 on January 28th, 11 a.m. Yeah, exactly the same. I did not fast forward in it. Um, just 73 seconds into the sky, the space shuttle um, um, called this uh, Challengers. Um, it took off from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Yeah, uh, it's just like 73 seconds. Yeah, they dismantle, I mean, um, in, in the sky and they kill seven uh, crew member on board um, with the live TV on. Um, that including this, um, uh, Krista um, McLeaf, um, he was supposed to do the demonstrate a live lecture for her students from the space, 38 years old. He born in 1948 and he died. He born in Boston and he died in Florida and you know why, why the Florida, right? Um, so after, um, after NASA thoroughly investigate the reason of this disaster, they find out it is a small and not so important part. That's what the main reason caused this disaster is the O-ring. So the O-ring is, uh, is meant to seal um, is the, uh, the hot gas 
in the um, from the in the container. Yeah, that's like the hot air, air should not come out of from the container. So that they have this um, O ring just put. I mean, prevent it to come out. But it seems that um, the um, this uh, O ring because the temperature, um, the, the, the space shuttle go in the such a high speed and the temperature um, heat up so quickly. So uh, it seems that the effect and it broke and then the whole gas came out and that disaster happened. Um, so the final, the, this, uh, um, this, uh, this integrated on the air space shuttle kill that none of the seven crew uh, survive and the cost of the space Actually, um, this space shuttle is 3.2 billion, just because the one O-ring is not, I mean, properly investigated or I mean, reliable, not reliable enough, right? Um, had NASA done all the high, I mean, reliability tests on all parts, that this disaster could not, could have not been, could have avoided, and those students did not need to lose their beloved uh, teacher in front of their eyes, right? So I want to tell you guys that, I mean, why um, I think that um, this time, maybe yes, right now the reliability is still not the mainstream um, uh, discipline. People will say, uh, okay, I know computer science, I know um, mechanical engineer, I know chemical engineer, I know um, electrical engineer, but I don't know what is a reliability engineer. From today, I want to make sure that you guys remember that. It would be very proud if you people say, if you say I'm reliability engineer, your ranking is already up from above all. It's not, I mean, you will get better pay than that because reliability, therefore, I mean, today I will check, I have checked with the professor Wang as well. Right now, you guys all know everything is going to be IoT, like internet of the things. Everything you use from now on is going to connect with chips and everything is going to control remotely somehow, right? So it requires a very sensitive and very high reliable part to make this thing happen, right? If only one part, as a one million parts in that one aircraft, only one part did not work, everything's shut down, right? Everything's shut down, right? So you have to make sure that reliability is going to be increasingly important measure in every com company. And I check with the professor as well that um, before, when you say that why reliability is not that important, is one is that um, people have more margin, right? So before, if you say um, the chair can, Professor Dan, give me an example, that chair can make for five years, you can use for five years. But you can, actually, even 10 years, you can use because the margin, they actually is very, um, uh, is high. The, even the profit margin was high, but right now, the highly competitive um, market Every in every industry, everything count, right? Before they, they have the margin of this much to, I mean, make very strong, very strong parts. Right now the margin is this much. So they have to make sure that every, um, every things, you do not have this much of the reliable, make it extra sturdy or, I mean, um, strong. You have to make it minimum, okay? A bow is good enough. Then, what is it about that that line is gonna i mean where that reliability um, engineer come into the picture so right now uh professor dan have told me that before um, two years back there's not such a thing called reliability uh engineer in the job market you know, when they people recruit now they do have just make sure that you guys whoever in this uh in this uh, uh webinar you really, like I say, right, everything for happened for is a reason that you know, this is one of the things I want you to know, you should foresee and then other people, this is coming, yeah? Okay, so I, um, I sincerely, I mean, hope that you guys um, pay um, your attention to um, Professor Dan's uh, um, presentation and see how you can do about it and make sure that, um, 